Aboard the Hindenburg, boxer Max Schmeling returns home to be greeted by his actress wife Annie Ondra. And the crowd that lines the route from the flying field to the town seems to be trying to make even more noise than the New York crowd did when Schmeling knocked out brown bomber Joe Louis. Once again, it's lazy, rippling days on the river for lovers of rowing from all over the world. And last year's winners of the Grand Challenge Cup, Pembroke College, have the honour of rowing the first heat against Thames Rowing Club. Pembroke are on the far side and they win by three quarters of a length. As soon as they've got over the first hurdle, Pembroke scratched from all the other events, so as to concentrate on the Grand. And here's the finish of the heat between Selwyn College and Westminster Bank, with Westminster Bank on this side winning by half a length. Between a quarter past ten this morning and a quarter to six tonight, 78 crews will have raced along this lovely stretch of river. And it's only the first of the four days, with bigger thrills still to come. Big event this year will be the rowing of the crew from Japan, who have travelled halfway round the world to show how truly international Henley is. A great semi-finals day, says our Wimbledon reporter, Mr Norman Dabbs, the famous umpire and lawn tennis broadcaster. It's Austin against Germany's von Kram. And Austin's playing magnificent tennis, the two stylists of the game in an epic match. It's Von Kram serving, and the first two sets to him, but Bunny's still fighting. He takes the third set, but goes down heroically in the fourth, beaten by a great passing shot that puts Von Kram into the final. And now it's Fred Perry playing Budge of California, a great player and a formidable opponent in a match that's all fireworks from the start. Perry loses the first set, but Perry's in fighting mood and he wins the next two. Budge isn't beaten yet. He leads two love and four two, but Perry does some amazing retrieving from Budge's best smashes. And at last Perry's through with a flying cross-court volley and it's another Perry von Kram final. It's one of the most dramatic moments in the history of the League of Nations, as the Emperor without a kingdom, Haile Selassie, moves onto the rostrum to address the assembly. And it's marked by an unprecedented incident, when the Italian journalists in the gallery start a riot. Monsieur le Président. Monsieur le... Speaking in Amharic, the Emperor says, I am here to claim that justice which is due to my people. I assert that the problem submitted to the Assembly today is a much wider one than the removal of sanctions. It's the very existence of the League of Nations. It is international morality that is at stake. God and history will remember your judgment. journey in the cause of reunion. Following the recognition of the Anglican orders by the Orthodox, the Romanian Patriarch, his Beatitude Miron Christea, arrives at Victoria Station. At Westminster Abbey, the Patriarch is met by the Dean and Chapter, and goes inside to lay a wreath on the tomb of the unknown warrior. Afterwards, his beatitude drives to Lambeth Palace, where he's staying as the guest of the Archbishop of Canterbury. Meet a lady who's very proud of her sons, and here they are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And that's just the right number for a soccer team, so here they come. But give some...